today we, we're going to discuss the motivation for crowd participation. And uh, I think one of the, maybe the most uh, interesting things about collective intelligence, and maybe something that has drawn your attention to this, to this specific course, is that sometimes we have an idea, but we can't uh, develop it on our own. We need more brains, we need more muscles, uh, and we, want, we need to involve other people. And then, of course, collective intelligence appears as a what seems to be an easy way of uh, engaging other people with uh, our projects. Uh, and in fact, maybe today's class is the class in which we will see that uh, not, as we say in Portuguese, uh, and hopefully they have this expression in English also, not everything is flowers in collective intelligence, right? It's not, it's not that easy because we need to get people's engagement and we need to get people motivated to participate in, in collective intelligence projects and that may be very challenging. Um, there will be projects that you say, well, but the goal is everyone's goal, so everyone is interested in having a specific problem solved, for example, and then you already believe, so everyone is going to join forces and help us make sure that this project uh, succeeds. Um, the problem is that we are a society of selfish people who may become altruist to some extent only because we want others to engage in the, the projects that we wish them uh, to be involved with, right? And we hope that they're also interested in that. Uh, and people will uh, support us in the project if they think that the effort that they are putting into it is smaller than the benefits that they are gaining from it, right? Um, so this is going to be uh, always going to be challenging. Uh, uh, even, even projects with very good uh, objectives that are good for mankind, that are good for everyone, that nobody could be against it. Uh, there will also, even in those situations, there will be also uh, a lot of what, what I call free riders, people that will say, well, it's, it's a nice project, I hope that people join, I hope that people, you know, contribute to it and I can benefit. Right? Um, I'll give you an example. Uh, Wikipedia, at least for anyone who's involved in education and learning, having an encyclopedia that is completely free is definitely something that everyone will find a good thing, right? Uh, so my question to you is, how many of you have already written uh, some content for Wikipedia? And I will not wait for the answer. I suspect that the answer is none, right? But if anyone of you have already contributed to Wikipedia, please jump in and say, I have, right? Uh, so that would be... Uh, a, a one way to contribute to to a project that everyone finds interesting and notice we are all sort of free riders there because we hope others contribute but we haven't again I'm assuming here and if I'm wrong please correct me uh, having never contributed to Wikipedia myself writing uh, let's say uh, an article I could have written about collective intelligence for example never did because again we're all selfish people who are interested in our own uh, business uh, and hoping that everyone, someone else does that for us. So having that, let's say, um, problem with myself saying I am a free rider here, I always take a lift with someone else and I am never driving my car and collecting people on the streets and saying, hey, do you, wanna, do, do you want me to, to give you a lift? I have, I think, about twice over, I don't know, Wikipedia is probably 20 years old now, twice I have contributed five euros, right? So, you know, many times Wikipedia is begging for, for money on the, on the web. They're begging that, well, if you're using this, if you think that this, this is valuable, please help us. I have contributed twice with five euros. So that's 10 euros, about 50, 50 highs or so. I can, I, I'm sure that it's, I have contributed much less than I have benefited. So this is always going to be challenging, uh, challenging right? There is even uh, projects that everyone think that, is, uh, that are great projects, there is a chance that we are, we are going to contribute less than we could. Uh, there is a chance that we are simply going to be free riders, expecting others to put the effort uh, so that we can benefit. Um, and then, uh, if it's already difficult in this, for, for these projects that everyone would probably find uh, to be interesting projects that need support, fancy those ones in which you have a great idea, but it's a, it's, you think it's a great idea, you don't know if others think uh, it's a great idea. Besides, even if others think that it's a great idea, you're the one who, who's going to benefit the most. And you still want to convince others to contribute with your, with your project. 
it's even more challenging because people who look at that project and say, well, okay, Alexandre thinks it's, it's good. Alexandre is asking me for my help. What, what do I gain from that? Right? Uh, we have, when, when, when in, in previous uh, classes, we have already discussed some of the, the motivations that we could have to contribute with uh, other people's projects, with other people's ideas. Uh, Malone and his colleagues at the MIT have uh, created a basket of three main uh, reasons for us to, 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 to contribute, money, love, and glory. I really like that because it's simple, and I, I, and I think that those three baskets are large enough to feed and accept a, a, a several of the other reasons to contribute that you may think of. Right? Uh, I remember that uh, also uh, Nambisan and Nambisan in one of those papers, I think our second uh, class, um, that, that class on my whole information systems and organizations course in one class, right? I remember that we had a paper by those authors, Nambisa and Nambisa, uh, where they were thinking of ways organizations could engage their customers and have their customers contribute with many of their activities. And they said, well, we can have customers helping us uh, conceptualize our new products. We, we can have them help us develop our new products. We can have customers uh, contribute in testing our, our products and seeing if, if they're perfect, if they're good for the market. We can have, engage our customers in advertising products. Uh, and then, uh, of course, they also they, they could engage their customers in all those activities, but you would think, you, you would ask, what would motivate uh, customers to, to participate in those different um, activities? And they also had their reasons, the, the motivations that, that, uh, that people could have, which were social motivations, for example, you engage with other interesting people to have ideas together. Uh, we, and, and notice that the social could be, for, for Malone, uh, it would probably, they would say, well, this is a sort of, oh, you, you, you have fun with that, you enjoy it, so it's love, right? Uh, they also say, said that you could uh, get, companies could get you engaged uh, because uh, you would have a pragmatic benefit out of it. And, uh, and then Malone would probably say, hey, a pragmatic benefit is money, right? Because a pragmatic benefit is you will get something out of that that you can measure and, and you can always convert in, in directly or indirectly in money, right? Okay, so see, the, the, and, then, and then they also had, uh, well, people can uh, uh, contribute because of, gee, what else? I mean, they had, they had four, four reasons there. Uh, so it was social reasons. Uh, hedonic reasons. Hedonic is, is for fun. Uh, fun is also, so there's the social for you to feel connected with the others, that's some, some sort of love. It could be also, the social reasons could be also uh, uh, glory, right? Because we, we interact with other people and we're always trying to, to show how nice we are or, to, or, or how, you know, to, we want others to like us. So it's not only our love for others, but our wish that others love us uh, and, and that could be glory. Uh, so there's, a, the social, there's this hedonic uh, uh, reason that they, they claim there, which again, hedonic fun, fun, one, other sort of uh, love. There was a fourth one that I don't recall right now, but what I can tell you, uh, everyone who's concerned with collective intelligence has to think of ways of motivating people, right? Uh, the most uh, usual way to motivate people um, in the industrial revolution society was paying them for their time, right? So uh, that's okay, uh, from a loan, money, right? Uh, uh, we can pay people in different ways. We can, we can pay them with money, but we can also give them some other pragmatic incentive uh, and that will lead some, some people or many people to do some stuff. Uh, but there's, we should also uh, be very careful to check if we're giving the right incentives to the right people because there are things that you could do for love and if there is money involved, that will kill your, your interest to, to, to participate on that. Right. Uh, I, I think I mentioned, I, I have to find this paper again. It's a paper that I read a few years ago and, and I don't know where I read. Maybe it, it's, it could even be in our literature here and in the ones that I suggest to you, but it's, it's a paper that I do not reread frequently. There was this paper in which uh, they discussed the situation of a kindergarten, I think I've already mentioned this to you, a kindergarten in Israel uh, where parents were supposed to pick their kids at five o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, they knew that if they were late, what would happen was that the teacher would, or someone in the, in the kindergarten would have to be there waiting for, with, their, their, with their kids until the parent came. And that, of course, caused embarrassment to the parents because they knew that someone was having to put some extra work sacrificing 
hours of, um, of, of being with their own families because someone was late, right? And uh, uh, one day, the, let's say the director of this or the, the manager of this um, kindergarten said, you know, we will have to punish these parents that do not come on time to pick their kids. So what we'll do now is if they don't arrive at the expected time, uh, at the end of the month, they will get an extra bill for, to pay for, you know, for, for the trouble that they're causing, right? So they will pay, I don't know what the money was, but let's say uh, 10 extra dollars uh, each day, they're late to pick their kids. The idea of uh, the manager was to uh, ensure that nobody would be late. But you know what happened? Parents became uh, comfortable with the fact that they could be late because they were paying for it. So notice that uh, what uh, the motivations uh, sometimes they create the opposite to what they were intended uh, to. You know, um, for example, uh, if someone calls me to give a, a talk on collective intelligence, I'll do it happily for free. Uh, you know, I mean, call me to go and talk about this. I will talk it because I like it. But if if you tell me, you know, Alexander, we are going to. We, we, we think that you, you like this, but we, we want to pay for it. And then they say, we'll pay you a hundred reais to do it. And I say, don't bother, you know, I, I, I'm not going to, 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 to go, to, to, to move anywhere to talk about this for a hundred reais, right? Uh, so there are, the incentive uh, uh, that you should give, of course, could you, could you convince me to, to, to do a, a talk uh, uh, based on money? Sure. But then it wouldn't be a hundred reais. Maybe if I had to travel and, uh, you know, I mean, if it was, I could still think if it's another, place here, in, uh, but, but again, it's, don't bother paying me because it, it will cost more for me to pay taxes on that than if you're going to pay me 100 reais. If you pay me 5,000 5, reais, well, then, then, then it's okay, right? Then, then I'll do it for, for the money, right? But, so understand that sometimes even the, you, know, you, you have to think what kind of, compens uh, of motivation you're trying to use because there are, sometimes you're thinking that you're motivating people and you're in fact demotivating them because the, the, what, what you're trying to give them back is not what they, they, they want, right, or what they need. And, and this will show up in some of the papers that we chose uh, to discuss today. Uh, I have a list of them here, just a second. Uh, we have the first one, the motivations and experiences of the on-demand mobile workforce, Theodore Ali. Um, uh, and th this is uh, specifically a paper in which um, the authors uh, try to see how wh what makes people interested in, in doing things in this on-demand uh, mobile um, uh, 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 let, let's say collective intelligence uh, services. It's crowd. This is basically crowdsourcing. Uh, uh, in many cases, I would say in, at least in the two cases, in the, in the, the two, two platforms that they, they they discuss in this paper, which are Task Rabbit and uh, Gigwalk. People do it for the money. Uh, they are micro tasks, so they are, they are tasks that do not depend a lot of uh, effort. People do for the money, but they also have other motivations, and they're different for these two platforms. So it will be interesting that we explore that because different platforms may be understood by by, by the contributors as having different interests, or or maybe the people who use those platforms may have different reasons for for their requests, and those. Um, uh, play a role here. Uh, by the way, I, I noticed uh, during the week when I, when I wanted to go there and, and review uh, these papers to, to discuss them with you here, I noticed that this uh, first paper here is not directly available any longer from, from uh, ACM Digital Library. Uh, we used to have it. I mean, we, we used to click here and get it. Now they, they wanted us to pay for it. I hope that this has not been a barrier to, to any of you, right? At least I didn't have any complaints about this, so I hope you were able to to read the paper, uh, but I always have to tell you uh, 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 a trick: never get too um, conformed with uh, the situation that someone is wants to charge you for for a paper, because many times this paper is available elsewhere. Right? Many of, of the authors themselves, of course, uh, the editors, the editors, uh, they, they they want to, to, to have their business going, right? But the authors have the right, usually have the rights to have the file. Uh, available in their own websites for free, right? Uh, and there are other times that um, this this file could be available uh, elsewhere uh, on the web. Um, in those cases, I, I don't know. Some, 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 sometimes there, there there could be some um, 
uh, intellectual property infringement. But I'm not talking here about you know getting into Sci-Hub or any any of these uh, Russian websites that have everything, and then you definitely know that's uh, that's that's uh, uh, not how things should go. But 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 if you if you Google and make or at least if you Google Scholar the paper, you may find it elsewhere. And by the way, I will just this is what I'll show you how easy it is here. I'll just get the name of it and uh, very quickly uh, Google Scholar it here to show you. It doesn't always happen, but in many cases, for example, in this case here, check, uh, it says that there is a PDF here, but I've done this uh, during the week. I, I know that when I click here, it's not taking directly to the PDF as it did in the past. And this is the reason why uh, our Moodle uh, leads you to, to, to a place where where ACM wants to charge you for it. But notice that here we have uh, all of the, the 12 versions of this paper available on the web. So why not check it? And then when we come here, see, we already see it in the archive.org. Archive.org, it's all free and open. Uh, th this is exactly where I got the, the paper to, to have it uh, here. Uh, uh, and then there's another one, another time that it shows here in this psu.edu. It's probably cornell.edu. These websites here, if, uh, I didn't click here to check if they're they're operational, but it could be the, the websites of the, the universities where these guys teach, and then they're fine with it, right? So never uh, think that you have to pay $10, $15 or, or whatever for a paper uh, when, uh, at least before trying uh, hard to, to see what we have, uh, wh where it could be available for free. So uh, we have this situation with uh, the two papers that are uh, in ACM library, in the, the ACM library, Teodoro, and also, uh, I believe, the what motivates Wikipedians here. Okay, uh, and then we also have the geography of mobile crowdsourcing markets. This is interesting because, well, we'll, we'll discuss it in, in a little further detail. But you will see that sometimes the the crowdsourcee, the person who's 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 going to perform the the, the job, the, uh, selects the job based on geography and in this case the authors are saying look this this may even take to some unfair situations where uh, it's expensive to be poor uh, that, that's precisely what they say it's expensive expensive to be poor because if you live in a neighborhood that is like dangerous neighborhood that's a, a, a neighborhood where other people feel that there is some risk if they if they go there to perform a task they will simply refuse performing that task while others that live in areas that are safer will get the benefit of uh, being served by, 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 by other people in that sense. So this, this is more curious than anything else. I mean, it makes sense. Uh, and, maybe, and, and notice that these two papers here, the, the one on on-demand mobile workforce and the, this one on mobile crowdsourcing markets. Notice mobile, the, in, in these two situations, we're not talking about any um, digital service, any digital um, activity by, 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 the, by those that are are the, the target of the crowdsourcing process. They're physical processes. They're, you actually have to do something. You have to be at the place. So geography matters. You have to be there. Uh, you will decide if it's close to where you live. It may be a task that you, you will take. If it's uh, far away, you will not take it. Uh, if it's close to where you live, but you think that, that the neighborhood is dangerous, for example, you may refuse to go there and you'll take another, another task somewhere else. So notice, motivation is not only about uh, money, uh, love and, and glory, there, there are some subtle uh, uh, things even, uh, such as safety. And, and, and notice that this uh, second paper here, it's discussing geographies in the city of Chicago. So it's, it's, it's not Brazil or any other country where we do have our concerns about safety, or, or we have more concerns. Here we're talking about uh, a large city in the United States, where people are also concerned, well, I, don't, I prefer not to go there uh, because of uh, different risks. Um, and then uh, we will also uh, have a quick discussion here, if we have time, of uh, what motiv motivates Wikipedians. Based on your silence, I understand that uh, you have not been uh, motivated to, 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 be, to contribute with, uh, with Wikipedia directly. Uh, but uh, if we were to start a, a collective intelligence project that we thought it somehow resembled Wikipedia in terms of what would motivate people, it would be interesting for us to know what makes these people uh, work in projects like that? Again, uh, uh, motivation is probably the most challenging part of collective intelligence. Right? 
we have, uh, I mean, I've been teaching this course here at least since 2016. Uh, some uh, our students have come up with very interesting ideas that could benefit from collective intelligence. Uh, and some of them failed. Uh, I, mean, I mean, master projects, they put a lot of effort into it. Some of them failed, well, not, not in, in generating uh, a, a good, interesting uh, academic discussion, but failed practically because they also they, they wanted to have something uh, uh, that, that would, let's say, change the world based on, on, on their, their efforts. Uh, and, 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 I, and I would say some of them failed simply because we were not able to push the right buttons in terms of making sure that people would, uh, would engage. Right? And this is tough. So when you're thinking of collective intelligence processes, think either on ways that the, the benefits that you're providing people are so big that they will contribute um, uh, you know, uh, without any concern, or that the efforts that you require for them, for, from them is so small that they may not even perceive that they are contributing with your, with your project. Or, or at least they accept, but after that they don't have to do much more than that. So, um, again, if we, th this is the reason why Waze uh, and Google Maps are so successful as collective I intelligence examples. It, they depend on each one of us providing information, but the, the, the way we do it uh, does not require any energy from us except from pressing a, an agree button one day saying that we allow them to monitor and track whatever we do or monitor of where we are with our cell phones. So understand that, uh, uh, that you still have to be convinced that uh, you should do that, but it's very easy to convince someone to accept having even its privacy uh, invaded uh, when uh, when some, 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 some benefit is provided that is a, an immediate uh, benefit. So people say, okay, Google will know where I am, but I will be able to go from point A to point B in a much easier way than, I, than, 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 than it happened in the past, right? So even the, uh, uh, here, here we have a, a situation in which there is a serious, a serious uh, uh, commitment of uh, important information, your privacy, uh, but still the benefit that you get uh, uh, makes you feel that it's, it's worth, right? Uh, some people that study, um, uh, well, the way we accept the technologies that are proposed to us say that this, uh, is, uh, this uh, reminds a little bit of that uh, Bible um, story about, uh, in which Esau, I think it's Esau that we say, uh, uh, exchange uh, or the, the fortune that he would get from his, his father, the inheritance that he would get by a plate of uh, beans because he was hungry. Right? Uh, and people say, well, we give, we give our freedom, we give our, our, let's say we give important information about our privacy in exchange of a, a dish of beans. Um, that, that's a very critical uh, way of looking at it, at it but, uh, but sometimes depending on, on, on our understanding of, of what, we are give, what we are giving in exchange, that could be the case. But anyway, they, those are projects that were successful in getting our cooperation. Right? Other projects uh, uh, require more, uh, uh, a much much more sophisticated thinking about how do I motivate so that uh, they can happen. Um, all right, so let's have a, a, a let, let's browse through these different papers. So the first one is going to be this: the motivation and and, and uh, experiences of the on-demand mobile workforce. Uh, let's see if this is uh, this is it. Uh, exactly the way I got it from Google Scholars. Um, this paper has, uh, well, be, being a very academic paper, you will see that the abstract has those ideas of showing us what the, the, the objective is. Uh, it says that the, 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 the paper is about studying the, uh, 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 the motivations and experiences of individuals who regularly complete physical world tasks. So again, uh, the term that they use here, on-demand mobile workforce, uh, so it's, it's a workforce, so it's people that put their labor uh, to, to perform uh, on demand. Mobile here means uh, that you have, you have to move yourself to a place to perform that. And in this case, they, um, they did this uh, collecting data from uh, workers of two different, where is it? Data collection included semi structured interviews with members, sorry, 
with members uh, uh, or workers of two different services. What I found interesting uh, here is that two different services that uh, relate to micro tasks, small, small jobs that people requested through, through, well, through these platforms. But those two, two, two platforms were slightly different from one another, and that made a lot of difference on the types of, of uh, services that, and even the type of, um, of uh, supporter or, or of crowdsource C, I call, that, were, um, that worked for, for, for in those projects. These two um, platforms are, as I said before, TaskRabbit and, uh, let me see if we can increase the size of this. Just a second here. TaskRabbit and, and GigWalk. And uh, the author compares these two. Uh, TaskRabbit is here and GigWalk is here. Uh, the author says that the task rabbit uh, tasks tended to be more complex, while the gig walk tasks tended to be simpler. But but uh, task rabbit and gig walk, these two platforms, they both demanded physical uh, uh, physical tasks. So it means that it's not only a matter of doing something on the web, like for example, Mechanical Turk, the the Amazon uh, collective intelligence platform most of the, the, the jobs do not involve having to move away from your cell phone or your computer. In this case here, TaskRabbit and GigWalk, they tend to be physical, right? Uh, uh, he also mentions here and, and say that sometimes you have uh, also platforms that are more inclined to have virtual um, tasks. And, and then Mechanical Turk is one of those in which uh, tasks are virtual and they tend to be simple. And then uh, the authors also mentioned here this other platform, I don't know, Fancy Hands, uh, which had complex uh, or more complex tasks, and but, but they were virtual. Right? Uh, of course, this paper is a 1214 paper, I believe. Yeah. Uh, so I don't even know if uh, all those platforms are still around, if they still have the same names and, and everything. But we will focus on TaskRabbit and GigWalk uh, to check how how different uh, people were in terms of um, of how they, how, how they they decided on, on, on what to do. And basically, uh, uh, Task Rabbit, for example, most of the the, the tasks were, were more like furniture assembly. Uh, an old lady uh, demands a someone in their in their in her neighborhood who could, who could go there and 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 assemble uh, a shelf or something. Uh, or picking the deliveries, or you know, uh, you know, some, someone asking someone to go and do the supermarket uh, shops for again uh, for, for the neighbor who has, uh, or some other house uh, activities or things related to the house. So people need to have and, and notice it's that these activities are not only physical, but in this case they require some direct contact with uh, the the person who's who's demanding the the service, right? Think, uh, of course, we think here in Brazil, we think with our Brazilian uh, uh, mindset and say, well, if I have to have direct contact with, with whoever's at the other side, again, there, there's a safety issue could be, this is not the paper that discusses the, 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 the different, side, the different suburbs of the city, uh, but whenever we have to have physical contact with, with someone else, this would probably be something that would generate some concern about uh, that as well, right? Uh, the same way as it, it could generate uh, from the person who's demanding the service, who is it that is coming to? But anyway, uh, they have already gone through the, their challenge of saying, I, I want to take the risk. But you, are, as a job uh, of someone who's taking the, the, the task or the, the job, will you take the risk of go to someone else's uh, place without knowing who that is and everything? So there is the, the, we'll, we'll see what they say here. Uh, and then for, for GigWalk, so it seems that in most cases what motivated uh, TaskRabbit uh, participants was the feeling of helping a neighbor, right? Um, of course, they were doing that, that for the money as well, because they get they, they get paid a little money, but they say, "Well, I'm help, helping someone who needs uh, something." So it's not only money; there is there is some uh, love there also. Yeah? Uh, and uh, in, in, in the case of a gig walk, most of the of the jobs being being requested there uh, related to things that were more corporate related. So, for example. They were demanding that someone did a, a store audit to check if, let's say, check if my, check, go go to, to to a supermarket in your in your suburb and check if my product 
is presented on a shelf, on the upper part of the shelf and not hidden somewhere, right? Uh, so it was a company asking uh, for people, go, go, go somewhere and check the price my product is being sold uh, for. Uh, uh, go, go somewhere and take a picture of uh, something. So it was tasks that did not intend necessarily to, you know, to help an old lady or to help a neighbor who, who's traveling and needs someone to go there and feed their, 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 their dogs while they're traveling. Something that you think, well, maybe one day I will need that also and I hope that someone will, will, will be nice enough to do that for me, even if it's for money, right, for, for a little money. Uh, in this case, it's, well, it's someone asking me to do something that they are, they, want, they simply want to do it in a cheaper way than hiring someone as a as a as an, an employee to do it it would be more expensive to to have an employee than just outsourcing it to someone random in the, so there's less emotional attachment possibly and there's definitely here notice that most of these gig walk tasks people will not do them for love oh i love to go there and check prices of products on a shelf right no they're doing that because they're being paid it, it may be little money but they say it's easy it's on my way i go to the to that supermarket anyway there's no problem i i, I can do that but there's no, let, let's say, there's no feeling involved, or, or there's much less feeling involved. Um, all right, but uh, I've already gotten into some, some of the differences between the two platforms, which will definitely show up in the, in the results of the interviews. But let's, let's very quickly here think of their motivations for this study. The motivations are here. Uh, the key research questions. Notice that this is very, very academic paper. So our key research questions were what are the main motivations for joining on-demand mobile workforce services? Uh, what are the main motivations for selecting certain tasks over other tasks? And uh, what tasks, task characteristics uh, did workers find more or less enjoyable uh, and, and worthwhile? Um, so if we think of the overall motivations for people to, to perform these tasks, Um, well, we usually have, for example, uh, a, a lot of research in, in different areas, so there's an, an abu abundant and long line of research on incentives, motivations from psychological studies, to econ uh, economy theory, to business and management research, everyone has studied motivations, right? Uh, at a high level, this body of research shows that people will work harder for the goals that they are rewarded for, but also provides clear evidence that, are, uh, that a truly unified vision of the interactions between incentives and motivations in human be be behavior is unsettled. So we don't know all the reasons. People tend to do things for money, but there are other reasons involved. And then they claim here that there are some extrinsic motivations, but also some intrinsic, intrinsic motivations. I'm oh, sorry. In some intrinsic motivations here. Uh, and, and, and that uh, those extrinsic and intrinsic mo motivations have different implications for crowdsourcing systems, right? This paper is very focused on crowdsourcing, so notice that regardless of it's more like TaskRabbit kind of uh, services that connect people somehow uh, and, 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 and involve maybe a favor to a neighbor, almost a favor to be paid, but uh, uh, or gig walks, uh, just uh, simple micro tasks to, to support a company with it, its interests, uh, there will always be some motivations that are extrinsic and probably uh, relate more to money and some others that are intrinsic. Well, I, I can do this because I, I think that if I were in the same situation, I would uh, enjoy uh, having some work as well. Uh, then it's interesting, uh, we, we will still talk about sabotage and collective intelligence. It's one of our, our next topics. But here, they were able to, they found that, uh, they found that, um, here, uh, they, they found out in their literature review, review here, authors already saying like this, Dons and Ali, found that younger men, under 25, were more like, liked <coughs> to try to game the system for monetary rewards, while men over 30 and women of any age were more likely to take, to take tasks seriously. So think if, and mainly if you're, well not, not mainly if you're paying, but uh, many times people will just try to get, cash the money, doing the least effort they can, which means doing a poor job or not, not putting uh, the, the required effort to, to, to do it. So understand that this is another challenge that we have. Uh, it's, it's still motivational because if we can motivate people for the, using the right reasons, there's a better chance that they will do seriously whatever we are asking them to. But there will be people that will say, well, these guys are paying me to, to go there and photograph something. 
I would pretend that, that I went there and go somewhere else and, and, and get the money anyway. So don't think that everyone is going to do what you believe, uh, you, you, you think that they will, or that you want them to. Uh, and then a little further here on this page, it's also another thing that caught my attention here was, uh, notice they're, they're reviewing the literature here, but they're saying, for example, this Mason, where is it, where's my course? Mason uh, at Ali also found that the design of the compensation scheme can affect the quality of the, the, the work considerably. So do not only design the, the crowdsourcing effort that needs to be performed, also design the compensation scheme. Right? Think of how you're going to compensate. Again, uh, if you ask a professor to give a speech, it's probably better that you do not offer money, unless it's so much money that uh, he or she will think, well, well, this is really worth doing for the money. But uh, in general, uh, people will do things in, acad in academia, people will do things more easily for love and glory than for money. Uh, so think of the compensation scheme uh, and, and think very well about this, uh, as well as you think of the, 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 the tasks that need to be performed. And then uh, these authors claim that uh, the research suggests that when people are intrinsically, intrinsically motivated by desires to explore and learn, they will find activity inherent, inherently interesting and ple pleasant and will extend their capacities. So they may work more uh, for less money uh, or for, for less compensation and, and leading to, 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 to better results. Uh, well, the main uh, uh, findings here, so the, well, the method was basically they offered through, they, they went through the, to, to the same uh, platforms uh, and, uh, and offered a job there, right, which was participating in, a, in, in an uh, interview. In this case, I think it was, I understand it was online interviews, so they, they phoned these people and, and ha had a, a talk with them. So they paid for, for those interviews. So people who participated did that probably as a, as a again, a micro task for money. But they probably thought, uh, some, some of them would also think, well, but I'll do uh, this because I find it interesting that there is someone trying to investigate my motivations and, and so on and so forth. So uh, there may, even, even there, there may be some intrinsic uh, uh, reasons involved, reason, motivations involved. Um, with respect to gig walk, uh, they say that gig walk boosts uh, 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 Gigwalk boasts that people can turn their smartphone into a second paycheck and that business can leverage their very own on-demand smartphone army called Gigwalkers. So notice, Gigwalk, by what it says, it already invites people to participate on it saying, you can have a second job with me. So it's very money-oriented. Even if it's small money, right? But it's very money-oriented. Uh, uh, and uh, let me see here. Um, and Task Rabbit, Task Rabbit is it was before here. Yeah. Task Rabbit uh, defines its services as neighbors helping neighbors. So see a difference between the, you know in the, in the proposition of the services and how uh, the way it is uh, those services it's, it's two electronic platforms, but the way that they're proposed uh, uh, already shows that Gigwalk is going to be more money oriented, more oriented to, pragma to the pragmatic benefit that you can get in exchange for the time and the effort that you will put into the task. And TaskRabbit says, you'll get some money here, but uh, you know, it's, it's more than anything else, it's, it's a community thing. We want, we, want, we want people that live in the same area to be more, um, uh, let's say, to, to be closer together and to help one another. So you, you will not be doing this for the money. You will get some money, but you will be doing it for, for community, for the community. Uh, then uh, here, just to, to, let's say, to summarize, task habit, task rabbit, and gig walk facilitate physical word uh, uh, tasks, word tasks, word ta tasks by, by being tasks that, are, that, that need to be done physically, but differ, differ in terms of typical task complexity, task assignment, and worker application process, and worker profiles. So all, all of those are different. And of course, this ended up showing in the, the findings, right? They say that several, Is it findings? Findings. Several themes emerged. Several themes emerged from the interview transcripts pertaining to particip participants' motivations and appealing to task characteristics. 
and uh, mainly uh, those uh, the, the the motivations were uh, the motivations uh, for joining mobile workforce service include perhaps expectedly monetary compensation combined with uh, personal control over one's own schedule and actions. In fact, this, this appeared to, to the participants of both uh, platforms that they had this feeling that, you know, doing these uh, little jobs kept them in control. They didn't have a boss. They decided what they were doing. So they felt sort of empowered, although it was little money, but it was money that they could collect from or uh, performing different tasks. Uh, they also, uh, so, so they, they did things for the money, but they also considered important that they had here this personal control over their own, what, what they were doing, right? Uh, some of them, one of them even said here, uh, where is it? Um, where is that personal control? Yeah, for not having a boss. Not, not having, having a boss or a required time and place in which to report as, uh, as a main motivation for complete this physical work tasks for compensation. This, this was an important thing for them, not having a boss. Uh, they have the quote of uh, one of the respondents here, if, I am, uh, if I'm out somewhere, if I have free time, I can look through the app and see what's available for tomorrow. I can do, uh, I can do that anywhere. Uh, another one says, I can accept the job if I want to or I can just ignore it and not do it, so I have a lot of control. So if, if the job is interesting, if it's local, uh, if, it's, uh, if it looks like, oh, I can do this, then I can just accept it. So ways people uh, reacted to, 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 the, uh, here to, to the researcher asking for their motivations. Uh, here a list of uh, the, main, uh, the main motivations here. So, uh, uh, according to the interviews, the main motivations uh, driving task selection over other tasks involved cost-benefit analysis regarding sit situational factors, physical location, and the worker's evaluation of the task uh, requester's profile. No notice the task requester profile. This was mainly the case in, well, in, in fact, it, happens, it happened in, in both cases. But in the case uh, of mainly task rabbits, where they had to meet someone, they had to do something at someone's place, or they, 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 there was more physical uh, uh, um, interaction, they claimed that it was important to see the person's picture on the profile. Right? They wanted to, that, that made them a little more secure about knocking at the door and saying, hey, I'm here to, 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 to perform that task. Uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, when they were assessing service at Gigwalk, that, remember, was more corporate-oriented, they, they were thinking about ethical reasons why that company was asking them to do whatever they were doing. Uh, I mean, they, they would avoid situations in which they thought that they were going to go to a place to fiscalize someone and, and where someone could be uh, fired or, or get some sort of uh, um, complaint or something because of the recommendation they, or the, the test that they performed. So there was uh, that kind of ethical uh, concern. Um, so. Yeah, so here's some discussion on the, the, uh, the evaluation of the task requester. Maybe I can very quickly go there. I'm just focusing on a few things that caught my attention the most here. But for example, with respect to the evalu evaluating the task requester, uh, task rabbit participants who frequently completed tasks that require face-to-face -face contact with task posters stated that viewing a profile and immediately exchanging personal contact information helped alleviate their safety concerns about meeting task posters in person for the first time. So notice that sometimes, uh, so, so TaskRabbit definitely re should require a profile picture, maybe a, a, some other additional information about uh, whoever is, is posting the, the job. Uh, maybe that's not as important for GigWalk. So notice that even though those two services are they're both for micro tasks to be performed. They're both, they both related to very geographically um, focused uh, activities. But the simple fact that one of them has that neighborhood um, uh, perspective that uh, help your neighbors or, or 
and the other one is more uh, pragmatically oriented to just get a few bucks doing uh, some additional uh, work. That simple difference in, in perspective among the platforms already requires uh, that when you think of the motivation scheme, that you do completely different things. Those two platforms probably uh, are, are perceived by, by whoever is, is interacting with them very differently because they, they, they have to motivate in different ways. Um, so TaskRabbit seems to be uh, fulfilling that, that uh, neighbor's helping uh, principle, while uh, GigWalk doesn't have that kind of, uh, of interest. Right? Um, here, another saying by, by one of uh, the interviewed uh, people. I always have this assumption that they are, uh, and, and they're talking about Geek, uh, GeekWalk here, that they are white collar workers and they're just trying to find information like it's cheaper for them to find out information if they have non-employees doing the work than to have paid employees. So th that's the perception people had of the tasks that were posted by GeekWalk, for example. And, uh, so, and, and then unlike TaskRabbit, GeekWalkers assumed that requesters were companies checking in on their employees and products. So companies that were there trying to figure out if their, their employees were doing the right thing. And then, of course, you think they're hiring me to go there and help fiscalize their own people. Do I like, am, am I okay with that or not? Uh, um, and then with respect to the definition of the job experience, So here they say, uh, there emerged a distinction between uh, tasks, sorry, providing experience or learned skills versus tasks providing an experience or, 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 uh, or interesting memories. So if you think, uh, probably um, Task Rabbit is more interested in providing people with interesting memories. Oh, I helped an old lady, uh, you know, assembling a uh, a closet or, or a table or whatever and or I took uh, there was a I, I, I took a bunch of flowers to a couple that uh, that were on the top of a bridge uh, having a romantic a romantic moment uh, so it's th these, are, these are more task rabbits uh, related tasks uh, this is something that would probably not be the the regular activity in, in gig walk at least based on, on what the authors are describing here um, So, I think uh, uh, the, 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 the most interesting uh, thing about this paper is this, uh, the fact that depending on what the, the purposes are of, of whoever is demanding the service, uh, we expect different uh, motivation um, schemes to be more successful. Right? Uh, if, you, if, you, if you want to, if you're emphasizing something that is for the collective good, for example, if there is this uh, neighborhood improvement uh, feeling, people will probably do it, they, they, they will do it for the money, but they will also do it for love and glory. Uh, if it's just a task of fiscalizing an activity for, for a big corporation, definitely the only motivation there is going to be uh, the money. Uh, and again, focus on, on what your intents are with the, with the collective intelligence project that you have to decide the kinds of motivators that you are you're going to include in the, in the project, right? The, well, the second paper for, for today was uh, that one on the geography of mobile crowdsourcing markets, Thibault Speaker uh, at Ali. Uh, where is it? Uh, and uh, the, 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 the title here is Avoid the South Side and the Suburbs, uh, Avoiding the South, south Side and Suburbs. Uh, the geography of mobile crowdsourcing markets. And basically it has to do here with areas where for whatever reasons um, the, the service providers, the pe people who, who will be crowdsourcees, uh, who will perform tasks uh, that are crowdsourced, uh, they, they, they find it better or safer to go or not. Again, remember that we're talking about tasks that need to be physically performed and, and, and therefore uh, tasks that uh, uh, where the geography may matter. Uh, you, you, you will be more inclined to do things closer to where you live, but you are also going to be more inclined to do thing, uh, things in places where you think you have a safe environment 
which would make a difference. This is also a very academic uh, uh, paper. You will also see that I always say, look at the abstract and check if you find the objective of the paper. Uh, uh, and in this case here, the objective is answering these questions. What geographic factors influence whether a crowd worker will be willing to do a task? This is one of them, and, and a second one. What geographic factors influence how much compensation a crowd worker will demand in order to perform a task? And this is where they end up getting to the conclusion that the world is unfair. The poor live in places where they have to pay more to get uh, some tasks done simply because uh, others don't want to, to perform tasks there because of safety or, or whatever other reason. Okay? Um, they also explain in the abstract, they, they give us uh, an idea of the methods that they use and so on and so forth. Um, uh, this paper, uh, well, well they, they, they talk here about mobile crowdsourcing markets, right? It's, that's, that's in the title, mobile crowdsourcing. My, uh, understand this, mobile, whenever they're talking about mobile crowdsourcing, it means you have to move, right? Mobile here is not that you're using your phone, it's, uh, it's that you have to move around, so it's a physical thing, right? Uh, the other author uh, used a different uh, term. Here they they mentioned just a second uh, on demand mobile workforce. So they're talking about the same thing using different terms. Remember, this is what I've been telling you. Uh, the collective uh, intelligence community has still not gotten to precise terms to to refer to specific topics. Sometimes they say, are they talking about the same thing? Yes, here they are. The mobile what one calls mobile crowdsourcing markets. The other calls sorry. Uh, the other, the other authors call on-demand mobile workforce. Right? Uh, so, um, another interesting uh, concept that appears here is the difference between volunteered information and contributed information. Which may uh, and, and sometimes which, which one of them requires uh, more efforts? A volunteered information. Or a contributed information. The volunteered means you have you as a volunteer you're, you're a volunteer because you have to put your own effort there, right? The contributed information again going back to, to our examples of Waze and, and, and Google Maps, there is contributed information there. You simply said, yeah, I allow you to, to get this information from me, right? But it, volunteered information means that you probably have to uh, uh, do something else. So. Keep in mind that uh, again, it's uh, it's it's not uh, they're not terms that are that everyone uses exactly the same way, but these authors here try to make a difference between these, these two things because of course it's going to be much easier for you to get contributed information if you give some P's as 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 a let's say a compensation than volunteered information. For volunteered information, people will have to feel that they're doing the the right thing or they 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 have to feel that they're being compensated uh, enough, right? Uh, here there is a quick definition of uh, what a mobile crowdsourcing market is and they claim that mobile crowdsourcing markets are are the geographic counterpart to virtual crowdsourcing markets. And so virtual crowdsourcing markets, they happen anywhere, they, they're, they're not physical. They happen on, on the web, they happen electronically. But the, the mobile crowdsourcing markets is what they call a, a, a market that appears because you're there, you're close to the, the, the place where a, a task needs to be performed. So because of that, of course, it has to be convenient, uh, but this convenient also means it has to be nearby, it has to be close where, to where you are, and as they're talking here about micro tasks, it has to be easy to do. It's not, it's not complex uh, tasks. Um, so, um, yeah, among the, the the research questions, uh, where will participants in the mobile cloud sourcing markets be willing to go to complete their, their tasks? They noticed that there was a difference in geographies. Uh, and uh, and uh, 
uh, again, the other, the other question was uh, if, if they would need to ask to be paid more to do it in specific places. Yes, that also happens. Uh, in addition to that, uh, they figured out that different kinds of tasks may generate different kinds of engagement. For example, look at this table one here. Uh, one, one task could be, uh, suppose uh, you were asked to travel to an intersection in the, the, in the region shown in red on the map, there's a map there, on the, uh, and photograph all the signs uh, at the intersection. This should take about five minutes. It's five minutes, but you'll have to go to the intersection and, and take pictures. Right? It's a task, but it's a boring task, right? And the, the engagement level that you get from a person, a person is going to do that because they will get paid for it, right? Now think of a, 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 another task here. Suppose you were asked to travel to the region shown in the, in the map in red and take close-up photos of leaves and, and bark of the trees in the area. So with the pictures of, of, of the, the, the trees and then maybe the trunks of the trees. Well, this involves nature. This involves this, this is a, uh, maybe something that people will say, well, it's better to take pictures of trees than taking pictures of a sign on the, right? Uh, uh, again, the, the, the sign uh, picture is very, if, if we were talking about the previous paper, it's, it's very gig walk, right? So some company needs signs to be taken photos of and, they're, and, and I'm doing the boring task. Now, uh, maybe someone else wants to do some art project and they, they want to photos of the trees. Of, uh, of, this is a little more interesting. And finally, uh, another task is, suppose you were asked to travel to the, the region, region shown in red on the map visit someone's home and ask the owners to respond to a single question about local politics. All of them should take five minutes, right? This is again a difference uh, and uh, notice you have to have face-to-face -face contact with people so there, there will be those issues that appeared in the other paper will appear here. Uh, it will depend on if the person is more someone who wants to relate to other people or not, if people, the person is more uh, someone who, who's shyer. Uh, it may not have the same, well, it does, definitely does not have the same contact with nature, but it has contact with people, different people may be interested in doing different things. And I, I would say, even if, you, if, if the question is, if you go to a, a sort of a, a more, let's say, dangerous area and take a picture of a, a tree, you'll probably find that less risky than uh, go to the dangerous area, knock at someone's door and ask them about their poli uh, politics, uh, uh, politics uh, uh, ideology or whatever. Um, well, then they, they, they do all their, their, their research uh, and end up to some interesting conclusions. Um, that, for example, the mobile, where is this? I'm skipping a lot here because, uh, for example, where is it? Uh, Mobile crowdsourcing, market advantage. Uh, uh, so, so, sorry, uh, we presented evidence from the, from a quantitative and qualitative qualitative survey survey of Task Rabbit. So this also happened. The other one was Task Rabbit and Gigwalk. This this one here was only Task Rabbit, indicating that mobile crowdsourcing market uh, markets advantage the advantaged and disadvantage the disadvantaged uh, in the sense that it's uh, it's more expensive for the poor to get. Uh, jobs uh, to, 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 to convince others to perform little tasks for them than it is for the, for the rich. Uh, and, and, and then, of course, this also shows here as a, um, uh, there's an uneven geography of mobile crowd working markets. So there are areas that will, there will be more people and areas that there is less. We see that also happening, for example, here in Brazil with Uber drivers. There is, uh, it's much more easy for you to get an Uber driver in, uh, in suburbs that are more, the richer suburbs than uh, where the poor live. So the poor will, will, will have to pay more and get a taxi, or the poor will have to, to pay more in the sense that we'll have to walk uh, uh, because they will not be served uh, with the same level of service that uh, others uh, may, may get. And, and that considering that uh, Uber is also a collective intelligence uh, platform to some, to, to some, to, to a lot of extent. Um, okay, uh, third, third paper was why users of Yahoo, Yahoo Answers, uh, do not answer some questions, right? Do, 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 
what, what are the reasons why they decide to outskip this? I will not uh, end. Sorry, that is not it. What is it? This is it. Um, so what are the motivations of Yahoo Answers? Again, uh, you, you may be thinking, why, why, why are we picking Yahoo Answers and not some other service here? Well, simply because someone studied Yahoo Answers. Uh, it's not a service that we here in Brazil have ever paid much attention to. But basically what Yahoo Answers does is people ask questions and there are other people that go there and answer those questions. In this case, my understanding is that they answer for free, so there's no money involved, but there is probably love and glory. People uh, will answer questions because they want to help others, or maybe they, they, they want others to, to think that there that, that could be some, some glory to doing that as well. They, they want to, to be, sometimes, I don't know if that's, this is the case in Yahoo, but sometimes people may even get to one of those boards where they show the, the people who, who, who give the best answers or whatever, so that's glory also. Uh, and uh, what happened here is that, for example, uh, they, they, and, and it's interesting because many times we have to do some research to find out what others could say, well, that's obvious, right? But even the obvious, m m maybe the obvious is not what happens. Uh, so, so the obvious only gets to, to be perceived as obvious when it's stated and when it's clearly defined as, yeah, this is what happens, right? Uh, so what they found out here is that, for example, those uh, strong, um, um, the power users, the, 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 those people who, who answer many, uh, more questions than, 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 than many other people do, they prefer not to answer questions that many others have already answered. Well, there's an obvious reason. If they're doing that for love, in the sense that they want to help someone, if others have already uh, helped, there's no reason why to go there again and, and include another answer. And in addition uh, to that, for glory, for example, there is not much benefit to answer a question that several others have already answered and, and your answer is going to be there in the middle without uh, a lot of attention. So they first they, they prior, uh, prioritize questions that have not an been answered by others yet. Another thing that they do is they prioritize questions that, I, th that they think that are not sensitive in terms of um, uh, ideology or they, they don't want to get into, uh, into conflicts of judgment and, and the, so they want to help with with, 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 uh, with situations in which whoever is being helped and others who may read that answer do do not see them as uh, you know including a questionable answer from a different perspective so basically uh, they, they would they probably wouldn't be answering questions about politics in a polarized uh, uh, environment right uh, they wouldn't be answering questions about um, maybe some polemic uh, topic, they prefer not to, right? They, they skip those and they go to, to those questions where they can. Uh, so it's, uh, uh, it's, it seems, uh, uh, the, the, the results seem, seem uh, very, seem exactly what we, would, we, we could expect. But the, the interesting thing is, well, they went there, they, they researched it and they said, yes, this, this is what's happened, right? Um, so this, uh, we, we may have, uh, get, get more into details uh, in our forum discussion afterwards. And, uh, and finally, we have uh, the what motiv motivates Wikipedians. I started today saying that uh, although all of us love Wikipedia, we, we do not uh, get, most of us do not get involved in writing Wikipedia um, articles or, or even contributing to them monetarily or uh, with money. So uh, what does motivate uh, Wikipedians? And then this author here, um, had um, well, a paper in which it discuss, discusses several of the reasons for, for, for people to get engaged. Uh, among them, what happens here that is not showing? Come on. says that people uh, will contribute, uh, and, and, and here they're still talking about the literature review, right? The literature review says that people in general have several motivational categories. Uh, one of them would be the value, values, another one would be 
of social social issues, uh, uh, then they claim they claim that there is also uh, issues related to understanding, issues related to career. Career is more pragmatic, right? You you think that by doing that, that will give you better opportunities of career later, later on. Issues related to what they call here a, pro, a protect, pro, protective uh, category. Uh, that in this case, uh, a category that includes protecting the ego from uh, negative features of the self, the, the self, reducing guilt over being more fortunate than others. So you help because you 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 had opportunities in life that you think that others didn't. So you want to give back, let's say. Right? And finally, uh, enhancements. Uh, and this category here, they claim that. Uh, this category somewhat relates to the protective category. However, enhancement involves positive striving of the ego rather than eliminating negative uh, uh, ego-based uh, factors. Well, uh, all of those were then, uh, which, which were in the literature, were, were uh, assessed and they got to this table here, right in the middle of this page, with with the motivations uh, uh, and, and basically what they have here is uh, the assessment that they had from, from the people, uh, the participants. Uh, fun was very important so people contributed with uh, Wikipedia because they, they thought it was fun to do it. Uh, ideology had a, a let's say a, a large average here uh, but uh, it did not relate, you see here that you have, uh, well you have, you have the average of the, the, the importance of that motivator and then you, you have the standard deviation for the participants and then you have what, and, and this is what is more important to us you have the level of, of contribution of that motivation to actually participate so, so one thing is what people said that it, that was important and then they said okay so this is important but th this uh, uh, how did that affect participating so notice fun and and uh, it is very strongly correlated to, to, to actual participation, to actually writing um, articles for, for, for Wikipedia. Uh, uh, but some, uh, well, ideology uh, did not, was not, uh, was not uh, significantly uh, relevant statistically. Uh, values were, were, stati were lightly uh, correlated. Uh, understanding uh, was very correlated, but again, the the, the, the level was was sort of smaller. Uh, and so, uh, again, they, what they did here is that they had a set of motivations that were there in the literature, and they went there and checked which ones of them contributed the most to participation in the uh, in Wikipedia. One thing that I found interesting, and they did not explain why it happened, was that uh, from a total of a hundred and 51 respondents, valid responses that they got, 140 were from males, right? So 92% of, of the people who responded to their, to their survey uh, were males. So uh, uh, it seems that this is a macho thing to, to, to participate in, in or, or to contribute to, 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 to Wikipedia. And, uh, they, and sometimes when we get this kind of results, we expect at least that there's some more detail given, right? Because otherwise we as, as readers, for example, we don't know if, uh, if uh, when they say that, um, uh, so, 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 so they, they, they said that 151, they received 151 valid responses, so which was 40% of the number of, uh, of um, surveys that they sent out. Uh, but we don't know uh, among those, uh, th does this mean that uh, males prefer to respond and, 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 and maybe there were more females and so it's 40%. It, it, it seems that even the whole data set was predominantly male, right? But still, uh, it would be interesting to say, well, it seems that uh, uh, for whatever reason, males also responded more. Of course, they would have to try and understand, understand the reasons for that and, and we don't uh, have that either. Uh, I find that uh, Wikipedia is, I mean, Wikipedia is not micro-task, right? 
Wikipedia does de demand a lot of, of time and effort put into it. In fact, these guys here said that on average they spent it eight hours a week uh, working for working for free for Wikipedia. Right? Eight hours a week is let's say a whole day of work. Uh, so I always think that uh, uh, projects like this one, like Wikipedia, are the ones that we should try and understand the most. The same way as I always found, found fascinating to to look uh, uh, and, and to, to check what motivates people participating in, in open source software development. Right? There is, I think, in open source, well, it, it probably has also this same level of involvement. People spend many hours a week uh, contributing to that. What what are the reasons for that? They usually don't get paid anything, so they're doing that because um, uh, the let's say the organizers create an environment that is inviting. Uh, so people feel included, they feel socially included, they feel that they're doing the right thing, uh, they feel that uh, well that the time that they're putting there is less than what uh, they're getting out of it in terms of fulfilling their own. Uh, their, their own reasons to, to be doing that. Um, I, I remember that uh, many years ago, uh, at that stage, I was still not involved with collective intelligence research, and, and but but it already fascinated me the fact that uh, open open source was able to recruit so many people uh, and, and and to to get those people so enthusiastically engaged that uh, we had a, a master student here. I think it was 2003, 2000 that, that, that he was studying. Um, the development of uh, it was not Linux, but it was the development of one of these. Uh, it, it was another initiative that ran on Linux uh, for a database or something, and uh, and he was uh, part of that community. Uh, and I was really impressed with the amount of effort that those people were putting on that project, uh, without pay being paid for it. Which means that we're definitely um, out of the industrial revolution that only. They could only pay people with money. There's a lot of us, of course, we're, we're being paid by someone to do some things because we, we need money to, to survive. But then there are people that are happy to spend the same amount of time uh, that they spent on uh, a corporation that pays for their salary, working for free for other, you know, for other, in other projects or for other projects, if they get the right, right kind of uh, motivation. Um, again, it's tough, it's, uh, it's difficult, uh, we had some great projects here uh, that people would fall in love with uh, and that we were not able to push forward because we, we did not find the right triggers uh, to make sure that they would uh, get the level of, let's say, uh, of traction uh, among uh, other, uh, other people. This, this is probably the most challenging part of uh, collective intelligence, making sure that people are originally motivated and, th and that they keep motivated uh, during the development of, uh, of a project. There, will, there, there could be sabotagers, people who will sabotage for, for the fun of it also, right? The same way as people are doing things for fun, others may be uh, wrecking things or, or put, putting things down for fun. Uh, and and so, so you, you have to think of ways of keeping the morale uh, up to, to keep people in, engaged even when when there, there are disruptions, and all of that is tough. Uh, mainly if we're thinking of projects where money is not our main way of compensating people. So uh, again, don't think, don't, don't be naive and think that collective intelligence projects will succeed simply because they're, they, 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 they intend to do, to, to do good, right? Uh, it's not only a matter of doing, doing good or doing the, the, the right thing, it's a matter of making sure that all those involved have to do as little as possible in a way that we still, as a collective, do a lot, right? Uh, remember uh, what I said about that difference between uh, volunteered information and contributed information, but think also of volunteered work and, uh, well, uh, oh, sorry, volunteered, or, or volunteered um, uh, what would be a, the, the good, a good word there? Because uh, uh, what I want to say, think of, of the difference between getting volunteers and getting contributors in that sense that volunteers will have to put a lot of energy. And Wikipedia is able to get people to, to put eight hours of, of work a week. Most of us do not find ways of motivating people so strongly. So try to make it so that people have to 
contribute with something to, but that they do not have to put too much work or, uh, into the projects that you're developing because otherwise uh, they may be tired before you, you uh, or they may, may be demotivated because they get tired before you reach results that get them into a fresh uh, cycle of, of motivation. All right. Um, okay, so maybe this is a, a place for us to, to stop uh, and then we can come back after the break and work on our forum discussing the ideas that impressed you the most in these in this different texts uh, and, and ways in which we can think uh, we can be successful in motivating uh, others to participate in our collective intelligence projects. Okay.